All right, guys, before we get started, I'm going to leave the link to this compatibility page in the description below. That way you guys can see what games are playable and which games aren't playable. Now, the most important thing you're going to need to get your emulator up and running is the software update with the latest version as the making of this video being 4.89. I will leave the link to this page in the description below. Once you're here, scroll down, and once you see download PS3 update, what you wanna do is right click and go to save link as. And go ahead and select wherever you would like to save this file on your computer. I'm just gonna save it to my desktop. Now you may get this pop up that won't allow you to download the file. All you wanna do is hit the up arrow and select keep. And your download will start. Now let's head over to rpcs3.net where we can download the emulator. Link to this page is in the description below. Now we have the option to download for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. I'm on Windows, so I'm gonna select Windows. So this is your RPCS3 downloaded file. It's gonna be in the format of needing to be extracted. I use 7-zip to extract my files. If you guys need to download 7-zip, it will be in the description below. Once you have 7-zip downloaded to your computer, all you need to do is right click on the RPCS3 file, go to 7-zip, and we're gonna extract here. Now you're going to get quite a few files after you extract it. If you would like to keep all of this organized and put it into one folder, that's fine. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to do everything from my desktop. Now let's go ahead and open the emulator, which will be this icon right here. When this message comes up, go ahead and click I have read the quick start guide and do not show again. Continue. Now the first thing we're going to do is upload our firmware into the emulator. So let's go up to file install firmware go ahead and locate wherever you downloaded that software update firmware file in my case i have it right here on the desktop and there we are successfully installed ps3 firmware okay and then it's going to do some compiling now let's set up our controller let's go up to pads under handlers by default, it's gonna be set up to use a keyboard. If you hit the drop down arrow, you have the option to use a DualShock 3, DualShock 4, a DualSense, XI input, which is an Xbox One controller or an Xbox Series controller. I'm using an Xbox One controller, so I'm gonna select XI input. And the great thing about this emulator is that you don't need to map your buttons out. The emulator is automatically going to map the buttons out for you. Now, if you would like to change the layout that it gives you, all you want to do is select the button to change and then just hit that button on your controller and you can map it to another button. If you're going to be using multiple controllers with this emulator, just repeat the same thing under player two, player three, player four. Once you're finished, go ahead and hit save. Now let's go up to config and under CPU, the only thing we're going to add is enable SPU loop detection. Now this will improve performance and reduce CPU usage, but it will also maybe, maybe cause some audio stuttering in rare cases as seen in the description in the bottom. Now, if you experience this, then just come back here and uncheck this. But for now, we're going to leave it checked. Let's head over to GPU. We're going to leave the renderer as Vulkan. I find that Vulkan works better than OpenGL with this emulator. The default resolution, we're going to leave that at 720. But if you want to upscale the resolution, then you want to come to resolution scale. And if you up this to around 150, that'll put you at 1080p. Now, if you find that your game is lagging, you want to come back here and lower this setting. Under additional settings, go ahead and click VSync. This will eliminate any screen tearing and go ahead and check stretch to display area. Go ahead and hit save. Now let's add our games to the emulator. Let's go up to file, add games, locate wherever you keep your games. In my case, I keep mine on an external hard drive, select the folder and then hit select folder and your games will load in. Now let's check to see if any of our games have patches. Let's go up to manage game patches and if you do you're going to get this pop-up that says new patches are available do you want to update click yes 
Now you're gonna be able to see all the patches for all the games available that have patches. Some of these games you may not even own. To see the games that you only own, come up here and check the box that says only show own games. And then it'll only show you patches for the games that you have uploaded into the emulator. In my case, the only game that have patches is Kingdom Hearts HD 2.5 Remix. Now if you don't know what these patches are, well, they allow you to change the frame rate, aspect ratio, resolution, and quite a bit more. Some games will have them and some games won't. For an example, let's click on Kingdom Hearts HD 2.5 Remix. And let's click on the patch and we have the option to enable 60 FPS. If we click on Birth by Sleep, we also can enable 60 frames per second. So you can play around with the patches for whatever game offers them. Once you have them selected, go ahead and hit apply and save. Now let's load up a game and I'm gonna load up Dark Souls 2. Now if you would like to go full screen, all you want to do is press Alt and Enter. 